Hey, it's Joe Pell from Burke. It's early in the morning. I'm up in the woods trying to catch the sunrise behind me. I don't know if the camera's going to capture it as lovely as it actually looks. It's not raining for once, so that's real pleasant. Today I'm going to try out this uh, 2016 Emercon ration from Russia sent to me by uh, John Magnum. I'll put a link to his channel down below. We're going to crack this baby open and have it for breakfast. So if you guys watch the uh, Outdoor Tactical channel, uh, a couple of cool guys from Russia, or sometimes just one cool guy from Russia. Anyhow, they uh, let it be known that during a period of time, uh, the Russian rations were not produced correctly. I'm trying to do this and talk at the same time, and it's not working out for me. Uh, but I think this falls into the time period where the quality of the meats inside the rations were not up to uh, government spec. But we'll give her a go anyway. It's a little part baby out. Oh, I got her upside down, it looks like. Oh, man, that's a box of stuff. All right, give me a second, and then we'll do the obligatory right, inventory. With What we got? If I could do this before, I forget what they all translated to. Got a couple of drinks. Got four sugars. There's four creamers. There's one more underneath these two coffees. Two teas. Uh, this is the apple jam, which is always a favorite. I got a salt, some salt and pepper. I believe that's cheese. That's the pate. And that's the uh, vegetable goodness. Got one chocolate. Looks like some gum. Or three mains. A nice pile of crackers. Matches, stove. Uh, this translated to tomato sauce. We'll see. Uh, got some wet naps. I got three spoons, a knife, and the thinnest napkins I've ever seen in my life. Look, I, I can actually see through them. All right, let's get some of the important business out of the way. Not a mistake, made me drink whiskey last night, so I need this coffee badly. Package is frustrating me though. Oh, well, after much dicking about, there's two coffees and a creamer. that was going to taste better. It's not very good at all. It's really bitter. Well, I'm going to start my day with a little porridge and beef. Yeah, that should do the trick right there. My kasha is hopping hot. <laughs> I haven't touched it. It's just rocking out the stove. Of crackers this time. I got kind of your regular, what you normally get, and a Russian ration, and then this looks more like a wheat cracker. It might be a little bit sweeter. I'm going to go with just a regular kind for my uh, apple jam. Got my crackers laid out on what I assume is a sterile napkin. Let's give the... I probably shouldn't have tore such a big hole in there. It's really not a very convenient package for... Oh, goodness. That looks pretty normal. Oh, that's my knife. I'd like to tell you guys if this is good. I'm going to enjoy this. I think this is the first time I had a Russian cracker that wasn't stale. These are really good Here this time. Here we are on the culinary stump. You can see I got a little crispy on the bottom. That's always good. Nice and hot. Bring it in close for you. This isn't nothing new. It's just your plain old Russian porridge. Delicious. So as I'm eating this, I came to think that I actually had a, a Russian porridge out of a 2005 uh, ration last Sunday. It was about five days ago. And uh, it tasted way better than this. This doesn't have anywhere near the flavor that that 2005 had. Uh, it, that's coming up in a different video. But you'll see right away that that one has like way more butter or something in it that just made it much more savory. This isn't bad, it's just not as good. All right, I'm back at home uh, using the culinary stump for breakfast this morning, which should really be like a lunch or something. I'm going to have that stew, the pack of crackers, and the liver pate. If I can get this package open without spilling it all over the ground. That's always a challenge. Some Russian seasoning flying everywhere. Oh my god. This is really, well it's, what is it, like 44 out here? So it's, yeah. all right. As soon as I stood up, it opened up easily. Looks like we got some beans. And I can't tell what that, oh, some carrots and maybe something else in there. We'll find out in a jiff. All right, well that's heating up. Let's dig into this pate which is nice and cold. There it is right there. Pretty standard. All right, let's give this baby a go. I'm trying to dig the cracker in there using the viewfinder. Well, after digging a couple scoops of this, this is almost flavorless. Um, I don't know, Dave, what do you think that tastes like? I mean, it's not much of any flavor at all. Wine, it's not overly seasoned. No, I'm thinking I'm going to dump my pepper packet on top of this. It could this be because it's cold out. It's well, that could be. Kind of numbing the flavors. Yeah, it's just uh, not much going on here today. 
It's not bad, it just is Zoom playing. in on this stuff, I gave it a little bit of a stir. And uh, you can see there's a little bit of meat right there. It kind of looks like a corned beef hashish, hash, hash-like meat. It, it smells really good, boy. You guys could smell this, you right, want to dig good in. Good look at the finished product. I tasted the spoon, it's it's really delicious. But basically you got like a three carrots livers, a bowl full of beans, and a uh, dabble of meat in there. All right, let's give her the official taste test. I got a little bit right there where I kind of scorched her on the bottom. That's just more flavor. Man. Mmm. It's really good. All right, so Dave and I tasted this, and we're of the opinion that this is very similar uh, to a pork and beans without the sugar in it. It's way more savory. The, the pork flavor in this is fantastic, even though there's not physically that much pork. But if you guys ever had a chance to try this compared to uh, pork and beans, you're, you're leaving pork and beans behind you, I think. This is really good. For my next meal, I'm going to try what the translator describes as the highest grade beef, onions, and bay leaf. And we're gonna have a little bit of this uh, vegetable pate. Dave's trying to save that bland pate by cooking it alongside some delicious Spam. Oh, once it picks up the Spam flavor, yeah, it's, 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 it's good. It's gonna be golden once it picks up some it's Spam juice. It's gonna, it's gonna be boring and I got myself started here. Take a look at what's going on inside here. Well, these never look really good till they get warmed up. I don't look too bad though. All right, here's some cooked pate. It looks better at least. We'll see right, if it's jazzed we'll up in any way. Hopefully, uh, I'm gonna get the uh, pretty end. Ooh, gotta go. <clears throat> so my tashanka was boiling over onto my wood stove, which uh, was not something I wanted to happen. Back to the taste test. It's a little better. My container was crunched down, and uh, when I peeled this back, it's pretty sticky, so I don't know if this was compromised, although I kind of feel like it might have been. Let me get this open. Everything's just being difficult to open today. It smells fine. It uh, appears fine. I'm just going to try a little bit and see how that goes. It smelled and tastes fine, um, but I'm not really in the mood to... Uh, risk what may be a possibly compromised package on a ration that's already a year out of date. So um, I'm just going to stop with this right well, the here. The fat from that tashanka started running out all over my stove top, so we're going with the uh, double boiler method in hopes of uh, not trashing my he stove. Was saying, and I agree with him, if we had a bowl of plain white rice, you could pour this over the top and you'd be good to go. But that's our meat chunks right there. Boy, I don't know how you would eat this out in the field without making a huge mess all over yourself. Boy, there's a lot of connective tissue in there, too. Oh, there's our bay leaf. Oh, there's two bay leaves in here, anyhow. It is completely mushy. Well, the flavor on this is pretty decent. Uh, it's just so fatty, and it was really mushy. And you got, like, four actual bites of meat in here. That's just a long string of connective tissue right on the back side of that. Not sure what, what part of the cow this is from. That's a... Well, time to try out the uh, wet nap. I got chocolate chip cookie all over my hand from a different project. Let's see. Boy, they fold these so tight. It's nice and wet. Doesn't smell like anything, which is, uh, I guess, okay. Here we go. It's actually pretty thin when you get her all opened up. I don't know if the camera can, here we go. I'm, the ca I'm reading, looking at the viewfinder in reverse, so it's upside down and backwards, so I'm having a hard time uh, aligning myself. Anyhow. As the viewers Please. of the Morning Witch Channel, the man hard science here in Garage Kitchen, I will now present a 2006 Tashanka to compare against the 2016. Got some water heating up. I can get this going. Oh, you can tell right away that that is a huge difference in the meat to fat ratio. But we're gonna go ahead and get it heated up and uh, and try them out. Yeah, this is the uh, 2016. I've dipped into it a little bit. 
the fat or the fat the fat has separated to the top the uh, mushy meat underneath actually makes a pretty decent spread over toast okay so since it's not really a fair comparison to have a, a previously unopened 2006 versus a previously opened 2016 and say here's here and here uh, what I'm going to do is take this uh, Tashanka that I pulled out of a 2016 ration and here's the date code for those who are knowledgeable about those kinds of things I'm going to go ahead and open her up right here in front of you guys and uh, we'll, go, we'll do a side by side right, let's see if I can get this baby opened up with my arm right in front of the camera oh man the seal is just it's the thing is bent anyhow you know what this one's looking way better than the one that I opened before huh all right well shoot ain't that something well here we are after about 15 or 20 minutes of cooking in the boiler and uh, I skimmed some of the nastiness off the top of this it was a little clouded it still doesn't look all that great I tell you what I'm not I'm gonna withhold co uh, comment for a minute and I'm gonna stir these up and you guys can t uh, form your own opinions and leave comments this is the 2016 right here I'm gonna try to lift all the meats out so you can see what came with it that's that's what we got right there and I'm gonna now try to do the 2006 I got a chunk right here there's a little bit more and one big piece when it's really hot I'm gonna go ahead and take a little taste I can get some in the spoon try to bring her up so you guys can see let's take another piece out of the other one here we are let me see if I can bring this in I don't look like much does it well I've tasted both and the 2016 tastes like bay leaf thin fat and like almost zero meat flavor despite the fact you actually see meat there well there's some nice connective tissue right there the 2006 tastes like bay leaf delicious broth and really nice meat flavor even though there is still connective tissue the texture and flavor is so much better this is quite fantastic well we just got a couple things left to finish up these two teas which I won't be trying because the only thing I could tell you is this tastes junky to me but maybe less junky than the last tea because I just don't like tea at all I got this drink we can mix up real quick let's get that opened maybe I can do it without it in there without spilling all over my work surface here it's a uh, kind of thick like it's might have got moisture in there it's kind of clumpy let's give her a try Get the package all the way open. There we are. Well, let's do an it thing. I haven't opened up one of these packs of wheat type crackers yet, and I still have the cheese. So let's try those two together. Oh man, once again, the foil top is just kicking my butt. Here we go. those guys look like looks like a cracker this is nice and spreadable I actually uh, had the wood stove on in the garage so it's a little warmer in here today than uh, much of the rest of this video oh man I just snapped my cracker well that cracker is completely stale so I'm have to have some of this cheese by itself because the staleness of the flavor of the cracker was so bad I couldn't taste any of the cheese so I'll give her a little spoonful well I have to say this is kind of a bummer this is almost as flavorless as the oh, I just snapped a spoon as the uh, pate the, the texture on it is really nice and smooth and creamy uh, but it, it's fairly right, bland. Here's our drink let's give that a sip I don't know in the in my viewfinder it looks like it's orange but in real life it has more of a peach color it's pretty good 
Um, very mildly flavored. I might have added too much water. Kind of a fruit punch flavor, real light fruit punch, but it's I like it. Okay, it's time to give the mysterious tomato something a look. Hmm. That's bizarre. All right, let's squeeze some of this on here. It's a real dark paste. Um, I think it's like a tomato concentrate. It's pretty tangy. I'm not sure what that was supposed to go in. It's kind of actually has a real fun flavor to it. I can't describe, I've never had anything like it before. It almost kind of tastes at first like a jam, but then it goes to tomato. Here we are, last but certainly not least. Well, it's not the last either because I still have that gum to try. Uh, second to last but not least, be some chocolate. That looks all right. Give that a little. Well, this is very good. It's just a, kind of a regular milk chocolate. Nothing extraordinary, but it's it's quite delicious. I'm a little spoiled because I had the Ruka out of a Lithuanian ration this morning, so that was really good. Uh, but I'm enjoying this as well. I don't normally do gum, but we're going all in on this one. If I can get the package open. Oh, I'm having such difficulty. Oh, look at this. It comes off easy right there. Oh, it's just like a little, whoops. Look in the camera here, it's just a little chiclet. I have to say, that was actually really good. Um, it kind of has a berry flavor at first, and then it has a nice strong mint aftertaste. It reminded me of, uh, there's a company that makes a mint that's like a cross between watermelon and mint. And it kind of has that same uh, flavor, but it's berries instead of watermelon. Really delicious. Well, that's gonna do it for this video. I wanna thank uh, John Magnum again for sending me that ration. And if you guys wonder what uh, your old pal Fernbark does with old stale Russian crackers, well, he turns them into eggs. You guys want some crackers? Hmm? Oh, who doesn't want crackers?